Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to join this session, GP Virtualization. And uh, my name is Liang Yan. I'm from Virtualization team, which is part of the Enterprise Stories. Looks I'm the only one from Enterprise Stories in this lab conference. Anyway, thanks for having me here, and uh, hope you can enjoy this topic. So uh, from here, GPU virtualization, I'll give you some information from this part. First, give you some background. GPU, what's GPU, what's virtualization, and then uh, jump to the combination, GPU virtualization. See some definition and uh, how many types there, and also take a quick look on user case. Uh, after that, uh, we will uh, go through the critical techniques here, SRIO way and MD way. We will go there. Uh, this is two different uh, implementation for current uh, GPU vendor. After that, uh, I will run two demos here. One is on my laptop for Intel graphic. The other is NVIDIA, uh, based on V100 card. And then just some uh, latest and uh, to-do lists. So here, let's go to the background, GPU. So since last year, I know things become crazy for this area. Bitcoin, it looks, suddenly it looks uh, no one in the world don't know about it. Even my mom back in China who don't know techniques at all called me about, uh, do you know this Bitcoin? <laughs> Have you buy anything? But uh, that's it. Also the big data and uh, machine learning AI is also a quite uh, popular topic today. It's, it's just uh, no matter what you do, there's always a related to them. And uh, the benefit is also good too. Also, if you are just a gamer, like uh, here, uh, player I know in the background, hope you play it. So all these come to uh, one common thing, the GPU, Graphic Processing Unite. You need, uh, no matter what, you need a very good piece to do all these things here. And here is a picture of a V100. It's kind of the newest uh, graphic card uh, from NVIDIA. It's also kind of the best so far in the market today. Quite pricey. It's uh, over 10,000 uh, US dollars. And uh, this is only for computer purpose. That's why you don't see any interface there for display. So no matter what you do, like the mining, big data analysis, and uh, also just play game. All these things come into two purposes of the GPU. One is for graphic rendering, and uh, the other is general computer purpose. So those are uh, general libraries to use them. For the graphic, there's DirectX for Windows, and uh, OpenCL for all the platform. Wacken is kind of a new generation library uh, from OpenCL. It's still quite new, but uh, very powerful. And uh, for big data, so usually it's CUDA from the NVIDIA, Computer Unified Device Architecture. And the other one is OpenCL. It works for all the platform. So CUDA only works for NVIDIA production. Just remember that. And uh, here is a modern GPU structure here uh, from the Fermi. It's the first generation of a Tesla GPU card. And uh, of course, the, from now today, Walter, they changed it a lot. But uh, anyway, it will give you a basic idea of how GPU works. And uh, first, you could see this is different from CPU, of course. There are not so many like uh, uh, instruction branch or instruction prefetch, that kind of uh, uh, hardware there. But here is more designed for just some simple calculation here. And uh, it's the, uh, actually this is a MIMD architecture 
multiple instru instruction, multiple data, but uh, it's not a very good performance at that time. So they are basically using SIMD. And also, it has a, a unified architecture. I'll, I'll get you there later. So just uh, one uh, architecture there make all the things go. And it also support a very long instruction word for Anyway, generally, this is a heterogeneous compute architecture. You need to run a different instruction here. Like you need to run two different kind of instructions. So you need to do something to optimization. VLIW is kind of one way to. Also, it has a different storage unit, kind of same as CPU. It also has like a cache, L1, L2, uh, memory, local memory, uh, global shared, the dedicated memory, and also somehow it will use some uh, uh, main memory uh, by GTT, if you, you, you're familiar. And uh, also there's, uh, one thing I want to know is the warp scheduler there. This is also a new uh, concept for GPU, like uh, uh, it separates all its processors for different uh, this thread is not like the Linux thread. It's more like a, a divided by function. Like you can allocate uh, this kind of a thread and then run the, uh, So from here we can tell it already have this slice function, which is be good for virtualization. And uh, from here is a kind of a pipeline workflow for GPU. Usually when we do that, we need to run uh, an application through the CPU, and then you launch to the GPU. Typically, it will send uh, a lot of commands there, and it will do a bunch of things, vertex, rasterization, fragment, uh, blending, and then put it back to a frame buffer, and then CPU will get it back for this whole process. So earlier, a GPU designs a different uh, uh, shader here. Shader is a kind of a process unit uh, for functional, like a functional classification for that, functional unit. And uh, there's also like a fragment, or you can call it a pixel shader, and also there's some other shaders, like a texture. But uh, then they, were, they, they come into a unified architecture. So, only one general shade there, you can change its function by programming. This is good for, this is very good for the general pro, um, uh, computing for GPU. Uh, the way to make a, a computing work for GPU is that uh, you need to change, to make it look like a graphic uh, command. So, uh, in a way, the GPU, don't tell if you are Com compute or graphic, it generally, it generally will think you will do like the graphic function there. And with this unified shader, it makes it quite easier for compute. And also other functions, like make it all these hardware sources there quite efficient. So now we are coming to the GPU resource management. This is quite related to all the uh, virtualization so and uh, so here you can see there is a couple of uh, physical sources here, like a memory uh, channel. We can use a channel here. It's a uh, hardware for all the commands there. It's a command sub submission system. And uh, when you run all these GPU applications, it will get there. It will like it. It will, they will use a ring buffer for all these commands there, and then submit to this hardware, and then go to into a PFIFO engine inside of the computer core there to do this part. And also there's a contact, basically it's uh, uh, registered files, and also some uh, paste tables for different uh, uh, tasks they are running inside the GPU. It also allows multiple contexts in 
uh, together. So kind of seem like the process uh, context of that idea. And then the memory, you can see there's a device memory, which is the VRAM, and also there's a host memory, GTT. It usually saves a ring buffer, or sometimes if VRAM couldn't be big enough, they will send something for the GTT part, kind of a backup. And uh, so to make a virtualization work, we need to pass through all this kind of work inside the virtualization and try to make it uh, as fast as possible. So now we have a basic idea of the GPU. Let's jump to virtualization, which is my favorite part. First, what's the virtualization? I think most of you already know that. Uh, the, you can just find that there's a layer here. It's just a more layer. With this layer, you could run multiple OS uh, in one machine. And uh, why? Why do I want to do that? Because, like, you can run, first, you can run multiple guest VMs there. You don't need to buy a bunch of hardware. And also, it's very efficient. Like the topic, uh, Hannes just talked there, the authors cloud. So this is part of the region. If you just, uh, they, they did some uh, analysis, like if you don't use this virtualization, usually it's just like 20% of the whole performance. But with it, it could come to uh, 80, 90. So that's quite a lot. Also, there's like uh, security because it uh, hides all the information from the guest VM. The general attack, physical host attack, won't be work inside the VM. Also, others like the deployment benefit, you can see one configuration and uh, you can use it anywhere else. And also because this is, why, this is quite popular, there's come a lot of uh, providers here, KVM, kernel, kernel-based uh, virtual machine, and uh, this topic here is based on KVM, for the record. And also there's Zen and uh, Cedric Zen server, that's a commercial. All the last uh, three, they're all commercial version. Uh, VMware, Hyper-V from the Microfox, so... Um, um, Microsoft, Microfox. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, now let's see how virtualization evolve, how to optimize it. There is a different uh, states. Software, like first, is the simple way, QEMU so, or Box, is a software emulation. Basically, it uses CPU to inter to explain, intercept all the instructions and then execute it and then return a result for the required place. Of course, uh, it, it's super slow. And then comes to a parallelization. That part needs, you need to change the guest kernel, uh, which means uh, if you run a VM, you know that you are aware, but uh, that's, not, that's not what we are prefer to do that even though it has better performance. Uh, after that, with, since the benefit of virtualization is obvious, so all the uh, vendors, all the Intel providers, AMD, Intel, ARM, PowerPC, all these kind of vendors, they, they developed the, the, uh, the same hardware, the related hardware to support to to optimize it. First, the CPU, you mean her VTX, and uh, it just add a new mode for the CPU. There's a root mode, non root mode, to defer the, the guest VM and the host VM. And also the memory part, there is EPT, Intel MPT, AMD, I can't remember what ARM called. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so, and uh, the last part is uh, I.O. device, and also it's related to the GPU part here. And uh, there is like a VTD technique, AMDVI at MMU. So it provides uh, this hardware to accelerate your 
I/O devices in the VM, and also some like the SRIOV, MRIOV, single root uh, I/O virtualization, multiple root. Anyway, the basic idea is try to make VM access the physical side, the host, uh, as like as short as possible. Try to avoid all the expensive operations there, like uh, uh, VM exit, page fault, uh, TRB miss, all that kind of things, and uh, try to uh, other like the interruption. Try to make them as less as possible, and uh, that's also used for today's topic GPU part. So. Now, let's see the combi combination of the GPU virtualization. So, it's straightforward. So, the, the purpose is that uh, I just want to run a GPU inside a VM. And uh, also, like uh, the virtualization, it also has a different uh, state, also have different uh, types there, we could call, like uh, first, Software way, software emulation, CPU trap and emulate this GMU command and then function it and then return. So same as uh, uh, the CPU part, it's also slow and uh, quite limited because I just show you the GPU structure there is quite complicated. Even, uh, even comparing with other normal PCI device, IO devices, and uh, couldn't support a 3D acceleration. So then come on API forwarding. I show you that uh, programming model there. There's four different uh, model, DirectX, OpenGL, OpenCL, CUDA. So they come to this basic idea, like uh, I set an agent from the guest, I intercept the instructions, and then just forward, use the network protocol, go to host server side, and then forward it to the host, the, the host library, that part. So a lot of uh, commercial company, they provide this kind of uh, production, but uh, still not good. Like uh, even it has better performance, it's no like, no architecture dependent, but uh, sometimes, it, we, when we develop the API, usually is the most changing part. Like, uh, even you match the same a API version, it, it will be like an API hair there. So, still, we are still like uh, keep developing all this part. I want to specifically see one model here called the World IOGL, recently supported in QEMU. This is kind of a, uh, it's kind of a comp combination between the software and the uh, API forwarding. It's like uh, uh, it uses the word I/O, a pair virtualization part, to accelerate uh, the API forwarding, and uh, this one could support a 3D hardware acceleration. And uh, because it's uh, this part, it could uh, share between different uh, multiple virtual machines, and then comes to the I/O virtualization with the help of uh, uh, hardware, and uh, this just started recently, and uh, it's quite good too. First, like the GPU pass through, and the second is the full GPU virtualization. GPU pass through. Uh, yeah, I said that GPU is kind of a. PCI e device, but uh, with a complicated uh, structure. It, uh, first, it's from uh, like a PCI device and then AGP and then PCIe here. And uh, since it's a PCI device, so we can pass the whole device inside the VM. And uh, with that, we can provide a full API support, which means uh, all the all the programmable things there is support. It could support uh, uh, 3D graphic. It could support uh, general computing. And also, you could run native driver there. So 
That's really good. That makes the users wouldn't be aware uh, where they are running inside the VM or just uh, bare metal directly. And uh, this one is also provide a very good performance, native close performance, uh, 95 to 97, almost uh, close to the native one. And uh, of course, it has a bad part. Like it, as the the other PCI device, you all know, uh, it could only be used in one machine. Like uh, if you want to use it in this machine, you need to unbind from the host side, and then pass through inside the VM. Then you run another VM because the virtualization could let you run multiple VMs there. In that case, you need to unbind it uh, and bind it again, and also it will involve some virtualization, so which makes things uh, very tricky for this one. And uh, but it's stable, like, uh, and it's also supported by all uh, hardware vendor. From here, I'm talking uh, NVIDIA, AMD, and uh, Intel. And inside the SUSE, we could support it uh, from, uh, okay, this is for uh, NVIDIA part. <laughs> from, for NVIDIA, we could support it uh, since 12 FP2. And the uh, cloud team also uh, support it uh, on these days. So, uh, Let's see like the, how it works. I'll give you some basic idea, and then we'll we are go through them together for the critical technical part. So PCI devices, as all the PCI devices, there's a configuration space there. Uh, for, uh, 256 for the general, and 4K for the PCIe, and also there's ROM for GPU, especially for GPU. And also there's this kind of a bar base address registers for PIO and MIO. Uh, PIO is uh, just for that kind of low end uh, device. So from here, GPU, basically we, are, we use MIO a lot. And uh, uh, as same as the PCI pass through, there's uh, two comp components you need to learn about. First is uh, I.O. MMU from the VTD and the I.O. virtualization part. This is a uh, real hardware inside the uh, uh, CPU. Uh, same, same as MMIU, but it works for the I.O. address only. And uh, it could do DMA remapping and uh, interrupt uh, remapping there. This makes, with this support, uh, VFIO uh, coming here, have a bad, could fully support in this scenario, GPU pass through. And uh, for VFIO, uh, virtual function IO, like uh, uh, you could, uh, for configure space, you could use uh, uh, QEMU emulated and the PI, PIO. This is the general I/O uh, interruption. So you can use the there's an I/O bitmap inside the VMCS structure, the VTX part of the VTX, and the, also the MMIO makes the I/O memory at uh, I/O memory uh, access uh, by EPT like the normal memory. Uh, in this part, like, you, could, uh, uh, you don't need to use VM exit for some of the I.O. access. That's saved a lot of performance. And the other, like the interrupt and the DMA, the two main functions for the I.O. devices, they, uh, they also provide the similar implementation. So now we come to the full GPU virtualization. So 
like uh, we know about the GPU. Mm -hmm. Which you, you are, uh, oh. uh, yeah, thanks. Sorry. Okay. Um, for the pass through scenario, I heard that this is further complicated by the fact that um, VGA registers are basically global resources. And um, do you know anything about that, how that is solved? Uh, and how, uh, if they work around that in some way? Yes, that's a very good question. It's about the VGA legacy I.O. address from that part. Uh, so first, uh, the recommendation for using PCI pass-through, GPU pass-through, is using OEMF. <laughs> and uh, also for that issue, I think there is a progress there. Like, uh, it could support. At least uh, when I uh, uh, test uh, NVIDIA pass through that part. It looks the the bus also could work there. So I'm not quite about the detail, but uh, it changed. Still, we suggest uh, OEMF UEFI for, for pass through. And uh, even for GPU pass through, yeah, I forgot one thing is that uh, it only for high end uh, uh, GPU cards there, like the VGA. It's uh, only for like the personal uh, habit, like a personal habit there, for for using VGA. It's not supported uh, by any other vendor. <laughs> and uh, uh, thank you. So actually, you mean that it's not for legacy VGA, but it came so UAP GPT. Uh, um, then go up to the KMS directory. Or oh, okay. Yeah, that's, I think that's the answer. So I would also expect that uh, the, uh, the hypervisor turns off a legacy uh, um, VGA on the card before it uh, uh, actually allows any guests. So um, no modern graphics card actually needs VGA, just have it for, for backward compatibility. So my question was more about the kind of a legacy system where you just have some old BIOS running in your VM and that probably needs some sort of VGA to get it, putting at least for running the VGA BIOS and starting up the card. Um, well. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. <laughs> um, yeah, but for, if you really want to I don't think you really want to do this. So for initialization, you would still use an emulated card um, and only use this for either high-end graphics or GP GPU stuff. And uh, yes, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, would, I wouldn't even uh, think about uh, uh, this pathing through this. So you don't want to. Uh, um, pass through a legacy uh, device here. I think this is more for high-end use, not for the in initialization. There you still go with your uh, whatever um, Cyrus Logic emulated card. Yeah, my, my topic also covered a little bit later that uh, uh, usually it need a VGA, like uh, the legacy VGA there. But uh, Intel are also working on like uh, non GPU mode there, like uh, non VGO mode. So you could uh, use the the pass through or the VGPU there directly, and uh, we'll, we'll go there. So, and uh, yes, this this is some basic idea of a GPU pass through, and now we are going to the most excitement, uh, the, the latest uh, development for the, this part, for GPU virtualization. Uh, the idea is that uh, you could have a very good performance while you share your device with multiple VMs there. And uh, in order to that, we need to implement this kind of functions. First, 
we need to split because uh, there's only one host device, physical device. There's multiple uh, virtual machines there. So how do we could uh, sleep it uh, fairly and uh, efficiently? Usually there's a time slice and uh, also some like a frame buffer memory, we graphic memory, and also some depend on different uh, implementation. At our IOV, they will do the register too. And then, after you slide, you split it, you want to isolate it and make sure it is not confu uh, confused with other, conflicted with other uh, devices, and also it's safe there. So now it comes to these two ideas, IOMMU and uh, MDV. With all this, you have this uh, piece there, and it's uh, secured. Now you need to set up a scheduler, a management level tool there, to make sure you could uh, make them work harmony, and uh, they could be uh, efficient and uh, robust. It will like, uh, uh, I see robot here is because it also has some like uh, monitor function. It will carry the utility workload there, it could also like, uh, if it's not work, it's hung there for a while. This part could uh, shut down your device there and uh, create a new one. Uh, for this implementation, it's uh, pretty fixable for AMD because uh, uh, they implemented uh, in a hardware way and uh, a little bit uh, more flexible for NVIDIA and uh, Intel especially for NVIDIA, uh, because they are using software V, and uh, currently they are using round robin, just uh, turn different turn with credit, and it also there's another bound, another way to, this is also on progress, it's kind of a to-do things for them. So, yes, the vendor is NVIDIA, Intel, and AMD, and uh, it's kind of quite uh, demanded recently. I, uh, to be honest, I, I'm pretty new for this whole thing here. I just started from this year, uh, from, from a question back to talk with Ta Takashi and uh, Stefan and uh, Philip there. But after that, when I uh, working on the GPU virtualization part, I, had, uh, I already have four different customers be asking this kind of requirement, they said want to use it. And all their requirement uh, spreaded to that part, the graphic, and uh, like they want to run some solid, uh, solid like uh, auto CD, 3D marks, that kind of heavy APPs inside the VM. Some like uh, they want to use some medical devices inside the VM. And also some like uh, they want to run TensorFlow Cafe to run some general uh, compute applications there. And uh, also, the NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, they provide their solutions. NV uh, NVIDIA is called the Grid. It has its own production line. And the Intel, the totally open source one, merged, uh, already merged into the kernel called the GUTG. AMD, they have this uh, GIM module, graphic IOV module. But uh, looks like they, they are still working on that part. And uh, the difference between these three different vendors here is uh, AMD, it uses the SIOV, a hardware solution. Same as the PCI pass-through, somehow. But NVIDIA Intel, because of the uh, patent issue there, because AMD already <laughs> do that, so they developed a software way called the Mediated Device. Uh, this this platform also merged into kernel since 4.10. Also, of course, they are keep developing. There is some uh, future features there. And uh, for SROV, you can know like it has better performance and MDUV is a little bit slower. I will give you a more comparison later. Uh, one more thing you need to say is that uh, NVIDIA grid solution, is, it needs a license fee, it's a commercial production for them. 
And uh, like VMware, they need to charge you per vGPU there, per year. Can, <laughs> so you need to pay for their hardware, you need to pay for their software <laughs> for this solution. So. Uh -huh. And uh, this is the hardware uh, for which could support this function. NVIDIA mostly is their high-end uh, production line. Tesla, like the Volta, the latest, um, Pathaka, Maxwell, and uh, Grid could su support some uh, graphic uh, requirement. Uh, key one, key two, you may heard that. It's mostly for the VDI uh, feature. And AMD, uh, they, they, pr they, pr they announced the uh, Fire Pro a few years ago, like as. 7150. Seven and also, there's a Raiden Pro. They also released a computer production line for uh, M MI6, MI8, MI25. MI6. <laughs> I just realized. But uh, uh, they also announced uh, HIP. It's called uh, Heterogeneous uh, Instruction Portable for Portable. It's a, they provide a, a, a layer to, to translate between OpenCL and the CUDA. In that case, they could support CUDA too. Generally, CUDA is uh, NVIDIA only. Intel, Intel like uh, uh, from the, you know, they are just the interactive graphic card. They don't have the dedicated card. They tried, but really no good. So they cut off. And, uh, from hardware, they start from then, could support uh, like three VMs, and uh, uh, broadware, a little bit for QVM, and now Scalic. So this is the production line. Uh, yeah, I'll give you some use cases, like uh, since you heard a lot about this, this, is, this stuff, like uh, GP all the GPU virtualization. What can I do with the GPU virtualization? So first, normally, uh, because uh, the, for the GPU pass-through and the forward GPU virtualization, you will not aware uh, inside of the VM, which means it could support all the normal GPU requirements. Like uh, you want to run a heavy VDI, fine. If you want to run GPU compute, it's okay. Display encode some conference like a remote conference. That's all. This that's all. Plus, it will give you all the virtualization benefits. So, like uh, you could uh, just uh, create the all the set configuration segment, and for you use the efficient there. Plus that, uh, uh, it also used for cloud now. There is called a GPU as a service. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, public uh, cloud provider already support this, like AWS, they could do it. And uh, there's a Chinese uh, cloud provider, Alibaba, AliCloud, it could also support that part. And uh, so with this cloud, like the cloud backend, uh, you could uh, have more flexibility to do all these kind of things, like uh, geography, weather forecast, medical, like the oil detection, that kind of things. And also there's a media cloud, especially today as the media, social media become very popular today. And also like the, the content delivery, like the Netflix, all that kind of things. They, they also want some like the cloud backend support. Uh, also, there's a new marketing area from the M embedded area called the IVI, in-vehicle information system, like the autopilot uh, Tesla. For this kind of car, they have, from the picture, you could see that uh, you, there's multiple panels there. And uh, it's really better if you could use only one GPU to support all of them. And uh, this is kind of a new better for all 
Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, they all get into this part to do this, this work. So uh, with this virtualization implementation, like uh, they could just uh, put this frame buffer to this panel, this to that one, that one. That's a very good idea too. And even for the CAS, C as a container, as a service, like the Kubernetes, usually they use a different way to do uh, GPU stuff. Because uh, from the, the structure, you know that, they have the worst, they have the thread idea. So they literally, they could do all these threads, can take the switch to do that part. But uh, still, with this MD, with the full virtualization support, it could give you more security protection. And also Kubernetes, there's people already working on Kubernetes plug, plug for MDV support. So mm -hmm. now let's get into the real stuff, the SRLV and MDV. So why there's these two different implementation and they're, they're also good? It comes back to uh, analysis here. It's done by a Phoenix uh, test suite there for all the GPU access. Here, like a GPU resource, for the GPU resources earlier, we know there's like a MMIO and IO and a page table and the memory for the command, memory for the frame buffer. So here, according to their uh, uh, experiment uh, benchmark, they found from the load initialization states, most work is done by frame buffer. And uh, from the runtime, most workload is consumed by command buffer. So this gives us the idea. We can pass through the performance uh, critical resources there, which means the command buffer and the frame buffer for the DMA, they, are, they all belong to memory. But for other I.O. resources, they are register, because register they are using MMIO, is kind of the memory uh, register, uh, no, still I.O. part. So you can trap and emute, emulate the, them. And uh, without uh, uh, waste so much performance there. And uh, that's, that's the idea why this both could work. SROV and the MDV. So a little bit already. Hardware V, software V. Hardware need VTD, AMD, VI, and SMU support, which need IOMMU there. However, MDV, not that part, not that hard requirement. You can do without them. And also they are all provide a VFIO PCI API. That's good for virtualization. QEMU could support it naturally and uh, could, all, could let you do all the management from the user space level. And also for the scheduler, a little bit earlier already, uh, SRIOV is uh, implemented by our hardware. And uh, MDV is implemented by software. And uh, it included in their driver part. So different uh, device, they, they have their different uh, implementation. MDV just a platform to connect them between the host uh, physical resource to the guest virtual machine device. So there's a physical function and a virtual function ID concepts from SROV. Uh, similarly, there's a parent device and uh, MDV for the MDV platform. And uh, SROV has a better predictable performance. That's because uh, the uh, maximum for them. So for AMD, because uh, it's uh, from the SROV, which means uh, uh, there's a different VF. They have their exclude resources there. They're own only. They have the ID, the device ID, 
they have the register, they have the memory. So no matter how many you could run in VM there, like uh, you, if it could support, let's assume it could support uh, 10 uh, VMs there, even you run one, two, three, four, it could also like uh, a tenth, one tenth. But for MDV, if you run multiple there, because of the complicated uh, situation makes the performance dropped a lot. So that's, that's not a good part. And uh, going to this uh, mediated device framework, so uh, just forgot that a vendor specific driver is beta. From this platform, there is a mediated call module inside of the kernel. And uh, also they provide the M, uh, uh, module management API there compared to API. And also they have the VFIO support there for non type one. Uh, here, they just use the idea to separate them, but it's not the real IO MMU. This, uh, so here is more clear from this picture. Like, uh, uh, so first all this code, they are located in the uh, kernel VFIO under VFIO part. And uh, it uh, reused a lot of the VFIO stuff. Uh, from there, it created this VFIO MDV and uh, you res register your device to this bus, and uh, below down, it also you need to re register your physical when there's a basic driver there from the from the physical device interface, and uh, once then, when you write, it will use the uh, sysfs to create this device. Uh, it's more clear from the demo later, so. Uh, from the uh, when you create a uh, MDAV, it will under your sys file system, and uh, QEMU and uh, once they have, they will if we have IO, we will create a file descriptor, and uh, it will return this dis descriptor to QEMU. In that case, QEMU and uh, MDAV they could work well. So. Here, uh, this is a big different uh, implementation. Very similar with VFIO. Uh, here, they just add a new data, data structure here, external domain list, uh, which means you could uh, let uh, uh, another device uh, this, yeah, this because for IO MMU, when, when it provides a, a group idea there, its idea is to each one device, like uh, you need to share the same group, the same address there. Uh, when you do pass through, you need to pass all these devices inside of the VM. This is for the security purpose. But uh, we know MDV, it doesn't have hardware support. It's only from the uh, software. So in this case, we need to make sure uh, when we pass through, it's not excluded by the memory group. In this case, we need to fix, we need to make a uh, devices, one devices into uh, no, different uh, pass-through devices into one group, uh, the main VFIO MMU group. But uh, it basically, it's just a, a link, just a link structure there. You could uh, track all the MDV devices. So uh, when you load, when you load a device inside of the QEMU, it will check if 
this address is belonged to that part, the parent device part. In that case, they could let you pass through. Otherwise, you couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it, it may be straightforward when you see something here. Just from the demo, I, I just see you. So sorry for that. Okay, uh, just to show you uh, here. This is the Intel one. Is from my laptop. It's used the int, uh, Intel graphic card and uh, Sky Lake. Uh, from here you could, and also here. This is from the Auto OS Autos, and this is a V hundred one. So after you load. Uh, all the MDV stuff there, you could see there's... Um, Counter... Okay, yeah. Sorry. So here, you see there's VFIO, that's MDV, MDV, and uh, VFIO, IOMU type, and VFO. Uh, oh. No way. My. Oh, I couldn't log in. Just from here, you could see uh, all same. But uh, with two more modules here, NVIDIA, NVIDIA video, GPU, VFIO. That's because uh, uh, NVIDIA, uh, Intel, they already merged all their stuff inside the kernel. But uh, you, if you want to run VGPU, okay, I'm just giving you. Oh, no. Here is their implementation. You need to run two different. Uh, one is for the GPU, and uh, the other is for the guest driver. And uh, here, uh, when you run that, you need to, uh, for MDV, you need to create a UUID. Mm. So you can see from here. Uh, it will create a no. Where is this one? Oh, I see. Here, it will create this MDV support device here. And uh, so far, it uh, support uh, two. And uh, GVTG, we we file four. We can get into side one. And. Uh, there's availability. So far, it could only support one, and uh, you could, uh, if you want to create, you can just uh, echo UUID to this create. I already create one here. So no, 
I can just then that's easier. So I'll just uh, you can see the demo here. What? <laughs> no such fire, okay. So, no, it's the Uh, see, so, okay, I should uh, pass through this one. This is the correct one. Ah, sorry for that. So, I'll just do a little bit quick. That's awkward. <laughs> so I needed to now should be fine. She yes, the the earlier is because uh, I saw you the available instance. It only supports one device, but it's already created there. But now it's okay. So from here you see, uh, it will run from the here. There's nothing on the display yet. It's only on the, the terminal. But uh, once they load the driver there, it will swing swing here. So this will be totally functional. So let's see, NVDR. ND, NVDR is kind of the same, except that you need to install their driver and also install the driver for the gas, for the gas machine. Let me try again. So if not, it will just pass. Oh, looks my VPN doesn't work. Let's see. So here, and uh, also, this one is using actually using uh, I'm using Liberal for this one. That's the issue we had talked earlier, like uh, uh, couldn't support the VGA, you, you need to input a legacy which view there. But once you do that, uh, the, the display will, will not quite work, work well. However, for, uh, that's why for Intel, I'm using no SDR. Uh, I'm using SDR, no graphic, and then run this part. So here, here this is the new one. I just see, but uh, 
So, uh, for Intel, if you're using LibreWord, that, that's not a, uh, quite a work well yet. And uh, so, for GPU, I just hope. Mm, okay, let's, let's just finish this part. Time is. Maybe just to show you. Just show you the picture there. Ah, that's because of that device is reboot, I think. So, in order to make it work, you need to add uh, this this part command here. You need to add uh, this UUID. But I, th I think I reboot it, so this UID not work anymore. OK, so, sorry. So yeah, that's it. I'll just uh, let's see the, the last part. And uh, yes, uh, uh, we are already like uh, Intel, uh, our 315, 312, SP4 could support it. NVIDIA could also support. But uh, since it's commercial stuff, uh, we needed to uh, do something business. And I believe Philip also could give some update on the new. We're out of time now, so. Okay. <laughs> so, and uh, the other part, the other piece is the AMD MX GPU. So it's still ongoing. We counted them, but it looks it's not their priority. But uh, we are trying to push it. And uh, GPU pass through already worked for our cloud support. Uh, and uh, GPU virtualization for CAS, this from last meeting, there looks no interest yet. And uh, below is some work we are doing from the virtualization level, if you're interested. Uh, and uh, some, some like uh, problem issues for all this virtualization. Uh, remote display, not very well. For Intel, uh, NVIDIA looks good now. And then IMU compatible. Even though MDUV is not, uh, not necessary for MDUV, uh, IOMU is not necessary for MDUV, but uh, still some scenarios it could use, especially for this new feature, PSID. So there is a path showing on kernel now. And the other part is line migration. Intel could support it already. NVIDIA only support it from some commercial partner, like VMAir, uh, Zen Server, Hyper-V. And also, they need a new schedule algorithm for them. And then just the high-level support. As you see there, it's, it should be better if LibreWord could create this MDUV directly, not like we manually create it and then copy that UUID to the LibreWord, make it work. So same idea for the OpenStack and the Kubernetes in the future, if they want to support this function. And uh, that's it. Any questions? Sorry for the... <laughs> yeah. Any question? Uh, just a note on the usage. I could also think that um, with gaming, this would also be a field where you want to use GPU virtualization because then you can have old abundant games in a virtual machine and still run them. Uh, okay. Thanks. Uh -huh. So I saw that um, MDEV 
SysFS is only the root access, so no users, no normal user space, I don't know, no, no, no normal user can create and remove the de device, right? You mean for CS? Huh? Uh, no, no, MDEV. MDEV? MDEV, MD, yeah, huh? uh, media device. And you access via CCFS. CCFS, yes. Yeah, and the CCFS is, um, it looks like a um, root, root user only. Right, so that's why you do the you change the the root user it's, for op operating that. Actually, it's not that exact. It's uh, you need to create the driver when the specific driver yeah. will create will create it create this PDY and uh, MDV that bus will approve it and then load there register. It's more like a MDV platform is more like a bus and. Uh, yeah, it will create this PDEV. It is needed to create it by the different driver. Yeah, I, I, that uh, I understand. But uh, what I meant is, uh, um, you would operate it in by as a root user. Uh, yeah. Yes. And that's necessary because of the design of the. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so that means if we implement something that in container engine, then container engine has to do that as root user, and so that any. Oh, you're talking, okay, I yeah. think. Yeah, that's a different, uh, like, idea for implementation, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and another question is, uh, um, so you talk about the GPU that uh, schedule things, that means also the usage of each VM can be, so the bandwidth or so GPU resource usage can be controlled for, so how fine we can control that? Uh, how, yeah. How? Um, so, the, yeah, you can so I can imagine that C group. Uh -huh. So the sixty percent of CPU, uh, GPU power can be assigned to that VM. Oh, I see. So that's the uh, yeah, that's the the picture I show you. The data structure there, IOMU yeah. group there, yeah. because uh, it use yes, Libreword we are use this C group idea, control group idea for the, so IMMU. IOMMU in that part, it will have this specific uh, group there, so you could uh, yeah. pass through there. Right. MDV, yeah. you can't. That's why they add this uh, uh, external IOMMU group. And also they add a notifier, uh, notification like a chain there. So they will like to go through that part. If they found the, the match value, they will think, it's it's valid. It's a valid uh, device. Okay, so that it actually depends on the IOMMU for the that resource management. Uh, or n not no. not. Uh, it just add this this function, mm -hmm. this feature to implement it, but not necessary. That's the tricky part. Yeah, that's the key part. That's the key idea of the MDUA. So. It don't need IOMMU support because they don't have this hardware, uh, the real hardware in the GPU. So they need to, but uh, they also want uh, uh, like the, the compatible with the LibreWorld with the QEMU. So they also like want to uh, isolate the, the address. You can't just, uh, Put them. They were totally conflict, uh, confused, and uh, that uh, that part is more like an index. It's more like an index for them. So uh, you could uh, separate uh, uh, them with a different uh, device. We have like a, a MDV device. Okay. <laughs> we, we can talk later. Yeah, about that. Yeah, but uh, that's the that's the key 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 idea for the whole implementation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for <laughs> thanks. Really appreciate it.